Hello ladies and gents, boys and girls, people of all orientations and sexualities and welcome back to another Doctor Who review and today we have a double review for you, welcome to Mara Tales. Come with me as we explore the tales of the great snake itself. Our first story happens on the planet Diva Loca where the local tribe, the Kinder, are getting on with their ordinary lives. Meanwhile, some Earth colonists have come to the planet in order to inhabit it and prepare it for survey. But when they do, something else is lurking in the dark. Upon the Doctor's arrival, Nyssa falls ill, meaning that she has to spend most of the story asleep. Whereas, Tegan finds herself in a trance after the Doctor begins messing around with a bunch of wind chimes, giant wind chimes within the forest. The Doctor and Adric then eventually wander off, exploring the vast jungle, not knowing that Tegan has indeed fallen asleep. The pair find themselves entranced in a trap, as they end up being chased down by a machine with a person inside of it. The Doctor can't see the person, nor can Adric, from a distance, but they can tell that someone is operating it using their mind. The machine lures them to an outpost just out of the forest. At this outpost, there are three people who have come to colonise the planet of Diva Loca. One is a scientist who is aiming to figure out the natural culture and how things evolve on the planet. Then there's the commander who was inside of the machine the whole time. And then we have an altruistic soldier who believes that the forest is trying to attack him. And he must do anything in his power to keep it out of the base. As the story progresses, the lieutenant captain begins to become more and more irrational. He begins demanding orders at the doctor and his fellow colleague, the scientist, pledging that they can only leave the base with his permission, as he has been put in charge by the commander. The commander leaves the base and then eventually turns up changed. He becomes very happy and very complacent, meaning that even though he was originally in charge, when the lieutenant starts bossing him around, he becomes very complacent to help him. The lieutenant's madness grows and grows, even to the point that when the doctor accidentally stands on a cardboard bit of paper, that has been cut out to be a soldier. He, the commander points out that they can just stick it back together as glue. But the lieutenant, with his PTSD, begins to outrageously shout at the top of his lungs, but you can't mend people. You can't just mend people. Elsewhere in the forest, there is an old woman and a young girl. The young girl finds a boy who can talk in the kinder tribe, which is odd because all the boys on the planet don't talk. It's something to do with their genetic code, but only the women folk talk. The old woman points out to the young girl that something else is allowing him to talk, manipulating his synapses and allowing this to happen. The one who talks begins to shout at the old woman, calling her a blasphemer, and that she is going against the natural order of the circle of life. She points out that there is no natural order to the ability of him to speak, as he is not what he seems. After managing to escape the base, and receiving a mysterious box, the doctor and the scientist woman from the base head out to the forest looking for the people who sent the box in the first place. As they do, they come across the old woman and the young girl. The old woman points out to the doctor 
that only an idiot would open the box if he was a man. To which the doctor responds, then I guess I'm an idiot. Which I thought was quite funny, to be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then she shows them a vision of what will happen if the Mara take over the Kinder and the planet as a whole, and how it would plunge into chaos and absolute destruction. Eventually, the Doctor and his friends catch up to the one who speaks, and they imprison him in a ring of mirrors. Then the Mara escapes the mirrors, and because it cannot look at itself, it begins to wither away and turn into a snake. The snake becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and so eventually it's not left. But it does let the tribe member go. Also, quick thing. As the story progresses, we soon learn that the old woman and the young girl are the same person. Well, sort of. It's kind of confusing, but think of it this way. Aang in the Avatar is a reincarnation of the Avatar. So every person who has ever been given the gift of the Avatar would pass down and be given those powers. The same thing is true in this story, because in other words, what they're trying to say is the old woman was chosen as a child, and the young girl travelling with her was also chosen. But when the old woman passes away in the story, this means that her essence is then passed over to the young girl. So now that that's explained back to the rest of the Kinder story, the Doctor reunites with Adric, Tegan and Nyssa. Tegan finds herself very confused throughout the end of the story as she doesn't quite know what's happened and she can't quite understand what she's done. Uh, but yeah, the Mara also took over Tegan halfway through the beginning of this story, uh, and basically manipulated her into bullying the villagers. Now, the sequel story in this biopic is called Snake Dance. Snake Dance sort of follows on from Kinder, but in its own unique fashion. So without further ado, let's get into Snake Dance. Snake Dance starts off with the fantastic actor Martin Clunes, who plays a brat slash son slash king of a dynasty, if I'm right. Uh, apologies if I'm wrong, but um, basically he... He lives in an era where the Mara have been supposedly defeated. And for this reason, when he goes down to the market, everything is a gesture to that memorial's day, uh, as they are currently celebrating the Day of the Snake. Um, and as the story goes on, he begins to collect different pieces of artefact, and he comes into uh, a friendship with a guy down the market who claims to be able to show him the mysteries and wonders of the Mara cave. But when when the young man goes into the cave, he soon learns that this man is no more than a charlatan and a con artist, and he has used this to make profit out of the people in his city. He doesn't charge him for it, but he definitely does become more sceptical any time that he's disrupted by him. Elsewhere, the Mara has returned, but in the form of dreams in Tegan's head. Tegan seems to have set the coordinates for a planet she has never been to, doesn't know anything about, and seems to be intertwined with her dreams. So the Doctor comes up with a solution. He gives her a set of earphones with a melody playing in hopes that the Mara will never escape her head, and that whilst they're on the planet, and whilst they start to figure out what's going on with the Mara and the mirrors and the cave, that hopefully it gives them enough time to 
de-escalate the situation. But evidently this doesn't happen because Tegan loses the earphones when she passes out. She begins to see visions of the Mara and sends a fortune teller into shock, making her paralysed and pass out of fright, taunting her with the image of the Mara. When she gets to the cave, Tegan also begins to manipulate the mirrors, showing an illusion of her face as the Mara, as the Mara has now taken over her mind. She aims to use the prince to gain access to a crystal which has the power to defeat the Mara once and for all. The Mara intend to get this crystal in order to erase this problem in its entirety, allowing them to come back into fruition and take over the universe. The Doctor suspects this is going to happen, so in order to be one step ahead of the Mara, he begins to work around the scholars, even though they're very reluctant to help him because they believe him to be a charlatan and someone who is just saying things that the Mara has returned, as they do not believe it themselves. But soon enough, they do learn that the Doctor is right and that the whole situation has been unfolding before their very eyes. The Doctor then uses his own telepathy in order to contact another soul and find out a solution to defeating the Mara. The man on the other side points out to him that if they can restore the key to the tomb of the Mara cave, it should stop the Mara once and for all. Meanwhile, whilst this is all going on, there is a play being performed in the in the cave, a readaptation of the prince's great 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 grandfather who had fought off the last remnants of the Mara, or so it was to be believed. The story ends with this, and the doctor and his friends finally come to a conclusion where they believe that the Mara have finally been beaten once and for all. So Mara tells. What do I score the stories overall? Well, I score Kinder a 6 out of 10. And I score Snake Dance a 10 out of 10. They're both phenomenal stories. I just feel like the Kinder kind of needed a little bit more explanation towards the beginning but besides that the stories in general were absolutely phenomenal so thank you everyone for watching and we will see you in the next doctor who review stay beautiful